Today we're taking a look at how the 16 personality types handle stress. Now stress is just an emotional, mental, mental, <laughs> it's a mental process, man. Emotional, mental, physical response when we feel under pressure or in danger. I know we trash talk stress all the time. We're, stress is bad, right? I mean, it's not a good feeling, but it serves a good purpose. Stress is our body saying, hey, we gotta be on alert. We gotta be functioning at our best right now. Whether it's taking an exam at school or having a difficult conversation or landing a passenger jet with a 157 souls on board because both pilots are incapacitated after eating some bad sushi for lunch. Just normal stuff. To get through the situation, you need to be a little bit amped up. You need to get the adrenaline and the stuff flowing through your body so you're on your A game. From a personality standpoint, in those situations, you're naturally going to overuse your dominant cognitive function. Now why is that? It's because it's your favorite one. It's your ride or die. The problem is your inferior function, which is your least favorite function, the opposite of the dominant gets dramatically underused in these stressful situations. Ironically, this causes a dynamic where you could make the problem much worse because you're ignoring the insights that your inferior function offers. So all these examples I'm talking about today, it's how the 16 personalities handle stress badly. Pay attention so that when you're in a stressful situation, you can make sure that you're not over relying on that dominant function. If you don't know what dominant functions are, don't worry. It'll all make sense. But you know what's stressing me out right now, guys? How am I going to make a natural and effortless segue into this next segment sponsored by Cloverleaf? Let's get this 16 personality types assessment started. Okay. First question, would you rather be completely isolated on Mars or live in a house with 117 strangers who never sleep and just want to talk to you all the time? Uh... Is the house on Earth? Okay, sounds like you're leading towards the house with 117 people, which tells me you're a big league extrovert. No, it's just I'd prefer to be on Earth where I can do stuff like go to the library. What's wrong with the libraries on Mars? There are no libraries on Mars. Uh, yeah, there are. What? In this hypothetical scenario I'm making up as I go along, there are libraries on Mars. How am I supposed to know that? Well, if you're an intuitive thinking type, you would have figured it out by now, so you're definitely one of those sensing feeling types. You know, I'm sorry. I don't think this assessment is right for me. Wow, you seem pretty indecisive, which means you're wishy-washy perceiving type, boom, you're an ESFP, that'll be $700. This took 30 seconds. I'm not paying you 700 bucks for this bogus evaluation. Wow. That's exactly what an ESFP would say in this situation. I should have just gone to Cloverleaf. Click my link to take your free 16 types test on Cloverleaf. When you sign up, you'll get personalized insights and coaching tips sent directly to your email to learn more about yourself. And start a 14 day free trial with your entire work team to learn more about each other and how you can work better together. Hey, he said work team. That means he's an ISTJ. Okay. That'll be $700, please. Uh, cash only. Thanks to Cloverleaf for sponsoring that portion of the video. Now, back to my regular content. Starting off with the extroverted sensing types, the ESFP and the ESTP. Now, what these two share in terms of their response to stress is that they can oftentimes find themselves over-engaging with the present while brushing off any bad potential future outcomes. This is because their first function, their dominant function, extroverted sensing, is the one most attuned to sensations that are going on right now, living in the moment. So when they are stressed, they might dive head first into things while subconsciously ignoring any insights about how a situation might play out, which comes from their inferior introverted intuition. This can lead to them acting recklessly without any consideration for the result of their actions. Their actions might be directed towards solving the stressful situation, but still, they're not thinking things through. This impulsiveness comes from their desire to flood out the negative feelings of stress with sensations that can elevate their mood. You know, think of sad girls in the movies and the TV shows and, <laughs> you know, that you a whole tub of ice cream after a breakup. They're escaping. They're escaping into the sensory. You can also see these two types becoming paranoid about a singular future outcome that they have seen, they have projected with their inferior introverted intuition. They might think someone has bad intentions without any justification, or at worst, they might be roped into conspiracy theories. And if they do start to go down that path of thinking, this may even further their tendency to engage in random activities because instead of sitting down and just processing the situation slowly, slowly with their intuition, they will just be actively out there looking for something to validate their perception. Now onto the introverted sensing types, the ISTJ and ISFJ. The core stress response for these types is to want to stabilize things, to bring things back to normal. So their first function, SI, introverted sensing, is the function most associated with stability and keeping things at a level of homeostasis, which is, you know, things functioning as they should be. They have a strong inclination to learn the details of how things function when they're going smoothly, so that when things get out of whack, 
these types just want to restore that specific previous order, even if it's not really working anymore. So as they start to get more and more stressed, you will see these two types try harder and harder to bring things back to normal, back to homeostasis. homeostasis. Because of their inferior function of extroverted intuition, the ISFJ and ISTJ can be prone to overthinking a bunch of negative outcomes during times of stress. And usually this manifests itself as, oh, but what if this goes wrong? Oh, but what if this goes wrong? And they're going to ask that over and over about a wide variety of problems that generally aren't likely to happen in the first place. The extroverted thinking types are next, the ENTJ and the ESTJ. And when these types are stressed, they immediately think, what do I have to get done? What do I have to fix? What items do I have to check off a list in order for this stressful thing to go away? This can lead them to lose patience with others very quickly. In fact, of all the types, these two are probably the most impatient when they're stressed. You know, think of a manager in a movie who's yelling at his employees like, I want that project done yesterday. And this is because the extroverted thinking types are very group oriented. They're not just asking, what do I have to get done? But they're also going around and saying, what do you and you and you have to get done? Under stress, their TE goes into overdrive and their mind turns into a checklist of things that need to be done, whether related to the actual thing they're stressed out about or not. So for example, an ESTJ or ENTJ college student could be stressed about a project in their business class and they bring it home with them and they start badgering their roommates way more than usual about doing chores and paying bills, etc. Not related to what they're stressed about, but it's affecting everything. Because under stress, they rely so heavily on their TE, their introverted feeling, their inferior function gets ignored, which on the one hand could make them lose sight of who they really are, which leads them to make decisions that are, yes, getting stuff done, working towards a solution, but not in line with their values. On the other hand, this can paralyze these types and make it so that they are unable to make any decisions without others validating their choices. Surprising, right? I know. The ISTPs and INTPs, the introverted thinking types, get hypercritical when they are stressed out. Suddenly, they're over the top irritated when anyone else suggests something they find dumb. But the thing is, to these types, they consider anything that is not absolutely logically flawless to their own way of thinking to be dumb. So TI is all about what is correct and what makes sense to them. So as they become more and more stressed, you will see them become more nitpicky at small mistakes in logic to a point where it can seem pedantic, perhaps even persnickety. Think of the stereotype of the nerdy person who is always telling people, well, actually, and then everyone groans and they're like, oh, you're a nerd. We hate you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So except take that and turn it up to the point where they make you feel like an absolute idiot because you said something that wasn't even wrong. It was just not exactly how they would say it. Under stress, these types put all the pressure in the world on themselves to figure out the absolutely best way forward. They don't just want a solution. They don't want a solution that happened to work for someone else. They want the exact intricately detailed, perfect solution solution that they understand every part of. Because extroverted feeling is their last function, under stress, they'll start pushing everyone else away and burning bridges with others, maybe without even realizing that's what they're doing. So a friend might come to an INTP or ISTP with an idea that they're really excited to share, something that might even help these types with their stressful situation. But the INTP or ISTP just tears it apart and leaves the other person feeling hurt. Just like Charlie's brother when Charlie bit his finger. Charlie, IST TP confirmed. All the kids in the audience are like, who's Charlie? Up next, we have the extroverted feelers, the ENFJ and the ESFJ. Typically, these types try to stay upbeat, but when a stressful situation arises, you're likely to see some mood swings. Watch, Watch out! out! Of all the types, these types are the most expressive when it comes to feeling. Telling others how they feel is a release valve when they're feeling the pressure of a stressful situation. You know, they might even feel like the best way to resolve the situation is to get you stressed out too. Let's just get everyone stressed. If everyone can feel the emotional pain that I'm going through, maybe someone will step up and help me solve the problem. If someone else can feel the immensical pain I'm going through, they might be able to comprehend my situation. <laughs> my name is Sean, short for situation. Okay, let's get back. So this is because these types are ignoring their inferior function. Introverted thinking. FE dominant types under stress will feel very insecure about their own ability to figure out a way forward. That's a big part of what introverted thinking is. It's not 
just, oh, being logical and I'm doing a math problem or whatever. No, it's also about what is my way forward? What are the steps I want to take that work for me? So the ENFJ and ESFJ, they worry that their idea of how to fix the stressful situation, how to move forward is wrong. That's why they make sure everyone knows how crappy they feel so that others will swoop in and validate their decision. Ironically, this can make the FE types feel like they're a burden on everyone else and that they're the problem in the situation because usually they're the ones taking care of everyone else. But in stressful situations that require them to use their thinking function, they can suddenly become the ones who need to be cared for. ISFPs and INFPs, the introverted feelers, become really self-focused when under stress. Like I said with the INTP and ISTP, how they put all the pressure on themselves to figure out the logical path forward, the ISFPs and INFPs are very similar. They're putting all the pressure on themselves to figure out the right way forward, the good way forward, the appropriate way forward for themselves. It's not necessarily what's gonna work and what's logical, but it's just like, what is right? What do I feel lines up with my values and who I am as a person? Because introverted feeling is concerned with making decisions based on your own emotional authenticity, your values. And this translates into situations where these types will make decisions that are in line with their values, but run counter to the interests of others around them. When stressed, they're prone to isolating themselves to deal with their emotions, maybe only talking to one or two close confidants to process things. The reason they shut themselves away is because unlike the FE types, the ESFJ and ENFJ, the FI types need time to process their emotions on their own without input or judgment from others. Now, one of the issues is these types have extroverted thinking last and they're ignoring it when they're stressed. And the issue here is that they might find themselves overwhelmed by those tasks that need to be done, even if it's not that much stuff. Unlike the TE dominant types, like the ESTJ and the ENTJ, who naturally breeze through tasks and feel good when doing so, these FI dominant types will feel pressured by those to do's in such a way that they might just ignore them or put them off until they become a huge problem. Next, we'll move to the ENTP and ENFP. Now, when we think of these types, what comes to mind is creativity and bursts of unstoppable energy. And this can unfortunately be their downfall in stressful situations. As they get more stress, they get more random. You know, kind of like the ESFP and ESTP who I talked about earlier, these types also like to try random new things in order to solve a problem. But the difference is the sensing types will actually try random things in reality, whereas the ENTP and ENFP will just think up a bunch of possible ways to approach the issue in the mind. So contrast these types, the ENTP and ENFP, with their opposites, the ISFJ and ISTJ, who during stressful situations will just go back to the same old procedures to try to return to normalcy, refusing to entertain new possibilities. These types, the NE types, go to the other extreme and decide that the entire reason this stressful situation has occurred is because the old way of doing things was too restrictive and needs to be just thrown out. This creates situations where they're thinking so far outside the box that the solution could be right in front of them, but they don't trust it because it's in the box. It's known info that's been there. It's old. It's no, it's stale. It's no good. It's been, uh, <laughs> but of course this is because they are now ignoring their inferior introverted sensing function and taken too far. When under stress, the ENTP and ENFP will distrust and perhaps throw out any established routine or organization in their lives. My sleeping routine, gone. My chores, pfft. My daily routine, I don't need to do that no more. It was holding me down, man. They're hoping that if I just keep thinking outside of the box, I might be able to escape this stressor. Last but not least, we have the introverted intuitive types, the INTJ and the INFJ. Naturally perceptive and usually laid back, these types don't show their stress as openly as many other types. Yes, even the INFJ with extroverted feeling, a lot of times they'll play things a little bit closer to the vest. Be a little more calculated with the emotions they share. Now, when they're stressed, they will likely retreat from immediate reality in order to process what's going on. Now, that's not that abnormal. I feel like a lot of people will do that. These types take it way too far. These types, whether consciously or not, they don't believe that anything is new. So their intuition is trying to figure out how is this stressful situation analogous to another situation that I or someone else has already faced. As
as they become more stressed, they invest more and more energy into these abstractions of the stressful situation, which leads them to overlooking the actual details of what is stressing them out and probably not even engaging with the problem itself. Meanwhile, the problem is probably getting worse and spiraling out of control. That's what's really interesting about, well, I mean, all the IJ types, but especially INFJ and INTJ, they're all about control. And ironically, they're trying to control this one abstraction of whatever's going on. They get hyper-focused in, and <laughs> what ends up happening is everything else just gets out of control. I think actually this is why a lot of NI types, people who are INFJ and INTJ, might actually think they are P types because they're very controlling and very organized, but it's in this abstract realm. Meanwhile, the physical world around them is suffering. Like the, <laughs> their closet's a mess, their desk is a mess. Not typical J's. Now these types don't want to deal with the intricacies of reality as it is. So not only are they trying to figure out how this situation is just like another situation that's already been solved, they're trying to over plan how they will approach the situation or create an efficient system to solve the problem so they don't actually need to get their hands dirty. This is because they are ignoring and trying to circumvent their inferior function, extroverted sensing, which helps people see all of the obvious details around them and react in real time to the world. As they are searching for an answer to their problem, this tunnel vision can have unexpected consequences as they forget to take care of other aspects of daily life. They might unintentionally ignore friends and family members, forget to take care of their personal health, and let smaller daily tasks like laundry, cleaning up, stack up. Hope this video didn't stress you out too much. So <laughs> thanks for watching and until next time, stay cool and attractive. Say a stranger's come to